Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. Uh, so in this week number eight, we have been looking at adaptive integrator backstepping in more details in the last few lectures. And uh, so we essentially saw the unmatched design uh, and how to generalize it to the vector case. And we also saw how to do an extended matching design, which allows us to prevent uh, over parameterization. Um, we are well into the design and development of algorithms that uh, help drive systems such as the SpaceX satellite orbiting the Earth that we see in the background. Now, uh, we've already looked at several methods now. And what I wanted to do was uh, today uh, in this session was to look at an example that is a vector example for both the matched and the unmatched case um, and look at both the conventional design and also the uh, extended matching design. Yeah, so let's see how we can do. So this is, uh, I mean, there was already an example that I uh, asked all of you to, uh, a problem that I asked all of you to sort of try to solve, which is uh, not a, I mean, which is also uh, has vector parameters. Right? So, of course, I wanted all of you to try this. Uh, but what I want to do is to look at a complete vector example with the states and control everything being vectors, right? So, uh, and so that's what this is. So this is, um, sorry, just allow me a moment, right. So this is where we start. This is lecture 8.6, right. So I think this was 8.5, right. So we are at lecture 8.6 and this is the sort of system. This is a concocted sort of system, so I wouldn't worry uh, so much about what is the real relevance but the aim here is to uh, design a stabilizing adaptive controller with sort of parameters p and theta uh, we start with the matched case where we assume that uh, theta is the unknown right and theta in this case is a 3 by 3 vector x1 and x2 and the control are uh, vectors in r3 uh, P is also in R3, so therefore you have a cross product here. And theta is actually, sorry, I apologize. Uh, theta is actually a, a, a 3 by 3 matrix. Yeah, I'm sorry. So theta is actually a 3 by 3 matrix. Uh, so let me uh, just give it a thought first that if this is the example that I want to consider. Uh, all right, yeah, let's let's sort of look at this example, okay? Let's sort of look at this example and see how things go, okay? Right, right. So, uh, so let me try to do the matched case. In the matched case, P is assumed to be known, theta is assumed to be unknown, all right? So let's see how the design goes. So I'll start with the first stage and I want to prescribe X to D. But before I prescribe x2d, I want to prescribe a v1 as half x1 transpose x1 or the norm. So this is the standard choice whenever vector states are involved. Yeah, and we can also try a weighted version of this, but for us, this is okay. And I take v1 dot. And this I use to actually obtain my x2 design, right? Because I assume my x2 to be the control, right? So v1 dot comes out to be x1 transpose x1 dot, which is p cross x1 plus x2. Now the interesting thing is that uh, 
So I'm going to say note x1 transpose p cross x1 is actually 0. Okay, why? Because p cross x1 is orthogonal to x1 and dot product of orthogonal quantities is 0. Okay, or you can also think of this as a uh, scalar triple product, right? So this also can be thought of as a dot b cross c and I can rearrange it to obtain again x1 cross x1 which will give me 0. Okay, so this quantity is 0. So this product does nothing. So I am left with uh, x1 transpose x2. So a good choice of x2 desired is still my usual nice choice which is some minus k1 x1 where uh, k1 is some I, for now, I just take it as a positive scalar, just a scalar quantity, right? Great. Now, what do I do? I define my uh, backstepping variable as z uh, as being equal to what? My backstepping error because x2 is my true state and I want it to follow x2 desired. So, this just becomes x2 plus k1 x1 right and now what do i do i define my v as v1 which is uh, i'm going to say this v1 for now v1 x1 plus half the norm of the backstepping error square x2 plus k1 x1 norm square Apologize, and then of course because it is the unknown parameter case, right? I will always deal with the unknown parameter, so I have to add some term corresponding to that. Okay, I'm going to add some term corresponding to that, and I'm going to call it, if you may, uh, I'm going to call it uh, half one over two gamma mu tilde norm squared okay and i will explain what is mu tilde soon enough okay why do i need mu tilde let's look at this so here uh, the parameter is actually a matrix right and i don't we don't like to deal with matrix parameters so what do we say we say that theta um, x2 is equal to something like a w times mu you know that this left hand side is linear in the elements of the matrices of the matrix theta. Therefore, I rearrange it, right? So, what is mu? Uh, mu is actually equal to uh, theta 1 1, theta 1 2, theta 1 3. Uh, so, this is basically just the columns stacked theta 2 1 theta 2 2 theta 2 3 theta 3 1 theta 3 2 theta 3 3 yeah so that is what is your mu okay so this is very simple i've just uh in fact i can be careful and say that this is actually just w of x2 times my new parameter mu which is nothing but the thetas which was a matrix stacked in a vector Okay, column wise, okay. and then and then uh, mu tilde is just mu minus its estimate mu cap. Yeah, so this is just because I have a matrix parameter theta, and I don't like to deal with matrix parameters. Yes, I did it in the uh, you know uh, model reference adaptive control case, but I don't want to do it now. So I'm going to deal with the vector parameter mu. Okay, so this is what is now my uh, you know candidate Lyapunov function for the entire system okay this is what is my candidate Lyapunov function for the entire system right great so now what do I do I take derivatives and try to find the controller right so let's do that let's do that so I'm going to let's say 
Uh, let's see if I can copy this whole thing. Yeah, uh, I believe I can. Copy, I have to move to the next page and simply paste it. Okay, I don't know what I copied. <laughs> somehow copying the whole thing okay maybe i can still paste and delete it okay that's fine this is okay so what i'll do is i'll just erase this thing yeah great so now if i take my v dot here what do i get i will get v dot as a v1 dot which is a one half x1 transpose x1 so i'll get x1 transpose x1 dot which is again p cross x1 plus x2 plus this guy one half x2 plus k1 x1 or i'm going to just write this as z z transpose z dot which is x2 dot uh, which is w times mu plus u which is x2 dot plus k1 x1 dot which is k1 p cross x1 plus x2 plus just 1 over gamma mu tilde transpose mu mu hat dot with the negative sign right because mu tilde dot is just mu hat dot okay great so again i know that uh, this term amounts to nothing right so I'm going to write this as x1 transpose times x2 plus half z transpose this whole mess. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to make my life simpler and I'm going to write x1 trans x2 in terms of z, right? So this is actually z um, minus k1 x1 plus half z transpose uh, this whole thing gets here and minus 1 over gamma mu tilde transpose mu cap dot okay now you can see that i have a minus k1 norm x1 squared from here and sorry i don't have a half here and what that's a mistake and plus a z transpose times uh, i get a x1 plus w mu plus u plus k1 times p cross x1 plus x2 minus 1 over gamma mu tilde transpose mu hand dot okay again just copying terms and uh, moving this zx1 to this term i get this now i'm in a good position to design my control right this is an unknown so i'll just replace it with the estimate so my control will be just minus x1 minus k1 p cross x1 plus x2 uh, minus a good term which is k2z minus w mu hat and here k2 is of course some positive quantity right so what i have done what have i done i have cancelled this i have cancelled this introduced a nice negative term and tried to cancel it with my estimate right so with this uh, my v will be minus k1 norm x1 squared minus k2 norm z squared because of this guy right and uh, 
I will be left with plus Z transpose uh, W W mu tilde because I have a W mu here minus W mu hat from here. So I have a W mu tilde and a minus one over gamma mu tilde transpose mu hat dot. Now if you look at these two terms together, I can take transpose here, right? So this is equal to mu tilde transpose W transpose Z, right? Because these are all scalar quantities, so I can take as many transposes as I wish, right? No problem, right? So using that, uh, I choose mu hat dot to be so that I cancel this guy. So this would be gamma w transpose z. Yeah, so if I do that, I end up with v as minus k1 non x1 square minus k2 non z square, which is less than or equal to zero. And from here, I can prove that x1 goes to 0, z equal to x2 plus k1 x1 goes to 0, and this implies that x2 goes to 0. Okay, so this is what we want. We want, well, I mean, we did the stabilization problem. Yeah, but again, the tracking problem is exactly the same. No problem. Yeah, so we this is what we want. This is what we get. We get a nice. Uh, update law here, right? We get this nice update law here, right? And similarly, we get a our control law here, all right. So we get an update law and the control law just like we want. And this is our standard adaptive control. And you can see that uh, dealing with the vector case did not significantly complicate things or anything. Yeah, it was quite okay. Yeah, it was quite okay. So anyway, so let's, uh, so this is how you do the design for the matched case, right? That is where the unknown is theta and P is in fact known, all right? And P is in fact known. Great. Now let's look at uh, an example for an unmatched case, right? So I will try to construct an example. Right? So let's look at the unmatched case and see what happens. So what I want to do is to have a similar system. So here I'll have not p cross x1 because that will not be interesting enough. Uh, so I will do something like a uh, x1 dot is dub, something like a f x1 times a p uh, plus x2 and x2 dot is Omega cross x2 plus a control, right? Where again x1, x2, u, omega are in R3. Uh, f of x1 belongs to R3 by 3. That's a 3 by 3 matrix. And P, of course, belongs to R3. P is unknown. Yeah, omega is known. Okay, so this is the system. So now this becomes an unmatched case, right? Because I now have uh, unknowns here, right? So let's uh, try to do this with the 
standard or integrator backstepping type design right so what would i do i'm, I'm directly dealing with the unknown case of course so we'll see what we will do right so i will take my um, so i will first take my first set of dynamics so i will uh, want to do v1 as one half norm x1 squared plus one over two gamma p tilde squared right well p tilde is p minus p cap and x2 is assumed to be the control so x2 desired is of course uh, minus f x1 p cap minus uh, k1 x1 for some positive k1 so with this what will i get i will get v1 dot as x1 transpose x1 dot right i mean this is again assume this v1 dot is uh, assuming x2 is x2 desired you will get x1 transpose x1 dot right which is uh, fx1 p minus fx1 p cap minus k1 x1 plus 1 over gamma i apologize this should have been a norm also because p is in r3 and so this will be minus 1 over gamma P tilde transpose P cap dot, right? And this is just uh, minus K1 norm X1 squared plus X1 transpose FX1 P tilde minus 1 by gamma p tilde dot p cap dot i am simply uh, reproducing this step here right just combining terms carefully so now if i choose uh, p cap dot as fx1 transpose x1 times gamma then I have v1 dot is minus k1 non x1 square, which is negative semi definite. And I'm good. This is essentially what I want, right, in our standard adaptive integrator backstepping design. So I have a first estimate, first Lyapunov candidate, right? I have a first estimate, I have a first Lyapunov candidate. Right. I have the first estimate and a first Lyapunov of candidate, and we are good. Right, and we also have an x2 desired, of course. Right, we also have our x2 desired right here. Right, we also have a x2 desired right here. Okay, great. So now, uh, what do we want to do? We want to, of course, create our uh, backstepping variable, right? So we want to create a backstepping variable. And how do we do that? It's pretty straightforward, right? We design a Z, which is equal to X2 minus X2 desired. I'm going to explicitly write this up. And what is X2 desired? X2 desired is this guy, minus FX1 P cap minus K1 X1. So this is, plus fx1 p cap plus k1 x1 this is what is my z and so right so what happens now uh, if i actually compute my z dot which is what i'll do if i compute my z dot i get x2 dot 
which is omega cross x2 plus u plus this which is partial of f uh, with respect to x1 plus k1 times x1 dot and x1 dot is what x1 dot is uh, fx1 times p plus x2 and then I get a fx1 p cap dot okay and p cap dot is already specified right so p cap dot is this gamma fx1 so this is actually equal to fx1 times gamma uh, fx1 transpose x1 okay so this is what is this term and now uh, what do we do we uh, sort of try to of course we want to try to specify the control we want to try to specify the control but now we are in a little bit of a soup why this is what happens in this adaptive integrated term there is another unknown appearing here and because we've already come up with a p hat dot we cannot replace uh, use uh, p hat again in the control so what do we do we use a new estimate p bar so we design the control as minus uh, but anyway we we of course i'll just i'll just not design the control right now uh, design new estimate p bar for this term yeah because we already have a p hat and we already have an update log for p hat so we cannot use this origin uh, earlier update uh, earlier uh, estimate p hat so we need to create a new estimate and that's what we call p bar okay great now uh, once we know this, we define our complete Lyapunov of function as v1, right, which is a function of your x1 and p hat, and add to it our backstepping error terms, right, which is standard, and then a term in uh, the new parameter error. And then determine the new parameter that is p minus p bar squared. Okay, so this is what we have been doing, right? I mean, if you look at this, uh, how we did not the extended design, but this guy, right? So if you look at this, what was it? It was the original v, then the term in the square term in the backstepping error, then a quadratic in the new parameter error. That's exactly what I did. I just instead of having a matrix. Instead of having a matrix S inverse, I've taken just a delta and just, just some uh, delta positive. Right. And with this, my plan is to design a p bar dot. Right. So that's what we'll do. Great. So what I'll do is I'll continue with this in the subsequent lecture. Right. So you know, uh, we look at it very carefully. All right. So what did we uh, do today was we uh, have already seen all the methods uh, for design of parameter update loss for matched and unmatched control via uh, you know adaptive integrator backstepping and of course the extended matching design what i wanted to do was to take up an example so that's what we did for the match uh, design we took a vector example and we showed how to design a control and an estimation law or an update law for the parameter and uh, similarly we are now doing the same for a vector example uh, for the unmatched case and we are first trying to do uh, the design using the adaptive integrator backstepping and subsequently we will use the extended matching list yeah so this is so that we get some exposure to vector system adaptive control design yeah so that's the idea here okay excellent so this is where we will stop and we'll continue with this example in the next session. Thank you.